Hello and welcome to the Google Digital Garage today. Uh, today we'll be doing Find Your Customers with Google Maps. It's going to be a little bit of a deep dive into basically how we can utilize Google Maps, why you would use Google Maps, and why you would add your business listing. Essentially, we're going to do this in the normal Google way in three simple bite-sizable chunks. Uh, throughout today's session, there's going to be three opportunities as well to ask questions. One of the things I always urge people to do is ask questions and ideally introduce their business, introduce why they're here. It just gives me a solid opportunity to be able to basically uh, bring your business into this presentation, just demonstrating that it's live, but also actually take letting you take things away from this. Um, additionally, throughout today's session, we're going to have the wonderful Samantha, who's one of the Google Digital Garage trainers, should be passing on any questions, any comments, any information um, to myself, um, and hopefully make today's session that little bit more uh, interactive for all of you. Um, if there are any links, you'll see them just appear um, inside, um, what's it called? You'll see them in pair, appear um, basically inside the inside the chat bot and um, the chat box and um, basically throughout today's session keep an eye on there there could be some really useful links for you to take away to hopefully optimize your business um and we'll move forward hopefully and let you take them away to sort of give you time after the session to look into those uh, so do make a note of them please do click on them open them up and let's see where that takes you uh, throughout today's session uh, we're going to have it in three chunks as i said it's going to be create your listing and get verified optimize your listing with key information and last of all engage customers with google business profile features essentially this is going to be a solid session for you to take away a lot of information and hopefully make some points and take some notes so that you can action these after the session remember you can also pause the session and come back to it later on but you don't get the positivity of the live feature where you can interact directly with myself and um, one thing to bear in mind that a lot of people don't know about is Google have given you an amazing opportunity here. There's essentially a one on one mentoring session available for your business or charity. The only stipulation that we say is this is a UK based initiative. So if you are a UK business, if you work with a UK charity or are a UK charity, feel free to go to g.co forward slash UK mentoring. Here you'll spend about one or two minutes, maybe five minutes if you're not as IT proficient as myself. Um, and just tick a few boxes, put a little bit of information in and basically find a time that suits you to have a one to one mentoring session on your, I suppose, preferred area of topic. And um, so do have a look at this. It's g.co forward slash um, UK mentoring. And this will just give you an amazing opportunity to be able to boost your business moving forward. Please do not do today's session. Book one of them and do this content in that mentoring session. If you're gonna use something, say Google Maps wise, do all the stuff that you can from today's session, take it as far as you physically can forward and then book on that session. Just so you're getting the most out of these sessions rather than doing something that you're just doing holding a hand for comfort as opposed to something where you get to the end and you get uncomfortable and all of a sudden you're realizing actually I could do with more help on the more complex stuff. So please do try and take yourself as far forward before booking one of these mentorings. Um, so what we're going to do, you're going out for dinner. Here's a little bit of a scenario for you. You want to find a restaurant we'd like to go to, but how would you do that? So I would ask you and urge you to do that exact process. And the main reason I'm asking you to do this is starting to work out how your behavior would work around this. What's the process that you would do? For me, I would personally flick onto my phone um restaurant near me and it would come up with essentially different restaurants in my local area and it would have different ratings and i would use that information so then the next question is how would you choose the right restaurant near you so then i'd start flicking through i'd see ones that i'd be interested in i'd start flicking through them looking at pictures maybe looking at some reviews maybe looking at a little bit of content but the main thing is what I'm looking for here is, has this person maintained their listing? Is it something that I want to visit because the stats, the reviews, the average score is something that I'm interested in? But straight away, you can start to see, actually, there's a few things that make this decision for you. So this is one of the reasons we're discussing this is because listings on businesses on Google Maps is an amazing way of putting yourself in front of someone. 
I personally go to Google, there's Bing Business as well. Um, but essentially what we're trying to get at here is if you don't put yourself on Google Maps using Google My Business or Google Business now, essentially you're giving yourself an opportunity to be able to be put in front of more people and spending a little bit of time from today's session, you can optimize your content, you can get more reviews, and hopefully you've now put yourself in front of people that maybe you weren't in front of before to give you an extra dimension to your business and an extra way of generating leads. So what benefits are brought by Google Maps listing when looking at products or services? So one of the reasons we need to do this is because people look at this as a pretty much a the gospel of businesses. So if you're going online, you want to find some information, what are you looking for? 33% of people look for businesses based on opening times and checking the opening hours to make sure they can go there. It even links into Google Maps and tells you when you're on the way, this is shutting soon or this is closed, just a heads up. 32% um, of people look for location and 27% of people look for reviews. So essentially, if we just say each one of those is a third, all of a sudden, by not including one third of those potential search results, you're not optimizing the chance of your Google My Business listing being chosen. And it can just be 10 minutes here or there just to update it, add some pictures, add some content, just keep that content updating regular. That is all that we ask. So a complete listing on Google Maps helps customers engage with you. They're more likely to consider your more likely to be considered reputable by having a Google Maps listing. More likely to attract physical and online visits because people can see there's a location attached to it and more likely to lead to a purchase. Because essentially, if they didn't see you in the first place, they didn't go to your website. If they didn't go to your website, they wouldn't have got there without you being the Google Maps listing unless you've got a website that has been developed over a long period of time. But again, that wouldn't appear on Google Maps it would only appear in Google in the search engine. So essentially what we're trying to get out here is by having this, it's adding that level of reputability. It's sort of like how years ago a website was seen as a, ooh, that's, that's, that's a reputable business if it's got a website. You're just increasing the reputability of your business, social media, websites, Google My Business, uh, listings online, reviews online. Each one of these is sort of like a, a social paradigm. It's sort of like you've got, another online platform that actually means someone going to have a look at that, can use their opinion based on that um, social platform or that listing to sort of add their own opinion to start to go, actually, all of these together. I've never heard of this business, but there's a load of reviews here. Trustpilot's got reviews. They've got a Facebook. People are interacting with it. There's some reviews that you post on there. People are interacting. The content's been updated regularly. This has to be a legitimate business. I'll do a small order and see how it goes. But the main thing is, is you are leading to purchases. And that is what we're trying to do here. Essentially, it's the early stages of creating a sales funnel. You're getting the leads in in the first place, but now what are you going to do to keep them? So keeping your customers in the loop. One of the amazing things about Google My Business is it's a very simple tool to use. It doesn't really require a PhD in IT. It literally just requires five minutes of actually doing something. And maybe at some point in the early stages, having a play like literally having a play. Spend 20 minutes adding a post, removing a post, adding an offer, removing an offer, adding some pictures, updating the pictures. Oh, I've missed out captions. Add some captions. Essentially, there's no official training course on this. It's the University of Life training course. Spend some time investing in that and it will hopefully give you some investment back because you've spent that time getting yourself visible online. So here are three really good examples of businesses that basically utilize Google My Business and actually saw an impact because of it. So the first one is Go East Chinese Supermarket. So Go East Chinese Supermarket listed themselves on Google Maps once lockdown started and it led to a 100% increase of online visitors. Most of these visitors were based in the local area, which meant that they could go to the market and get the products online and let customers know the supermarket was still open for business, which was a massive thing during the COVID times because you didn't know. There was no guarantee that that space was open. People didn't even get to it. People were allowed to get to it. So straight away, here's an example. It's a 100% increase in online visitors. I'd be shocked if you get that right now, but at the same time, it's not impossible. But this was just by spending literally a few minutes adding content, adding updates, reassuring people that the business was still open, updating the business hours if it did have to change, adding some notifications maybe about how many people were allowed in the supermarket, how long the queues were, 
Have you added all of these new precautions? And every single one of these was a step forward for someone to be able to trust that supermarket, to be able to go, actually, this is the place that I want to go. So this is a really simple example of how this could change your business. You could also inform your customers of changes to your business. So Uncle John's Bakery is another business that was able to benefit from Google Maps during the pandemic. Uh, the bakery was basically to inform the new customers of new opening times and their practices and provide them with links to online shops because they would have had to basically done a massive audible. When you've got to think that these sort of shops didn't have the provisions for online, they would have had to go and bang, switch online, get a website going, inform people of this website. These are the opening times. This is your collection. This is your whatever. And all of a sudden, this meant that they could actually be displayed as a business that maybe wasn't there beforehand because you had to think about this. They promoted the online shop using Google My Business, put in links to it. They sold to new and existing customers. But the most important thing there is that the existing customers may have needed more information about this place. But more importantly, now they can tell other people about it and they don't have to go, here's a website, type in this business name, I don't see it. If you typed in bakery near me, all of a sudden there's a listing. So what we've got to consider here as well, it's not just the fact you're adding information online. It actually gives you the option to be seen. It gives you the option for people to see you who maybe didn't look for you beforehand, who were looking for a local bakery, local food, even food near me. If you correctly lined it up, that could be even be in there. So straight away, the impact on this was great because they could display the business, they could promote online and sold to new and existing customers. Then last of all, we've got, um, uh, finally even, the little box of books. Essentially, founder Lindsay um, realized realize that the increase in the number of children being homeschooled meant the need for books and increased uh, this increased dramatically. Uh, so she used Google tools to find new customers. And ever since, it meant that she had tripled the amount of people coming to her website. So straight away, it's not just about Google My Business. It's starting to think, actually, the basics could be your website and Google My Business. But if you've got a website, you really should have Google Analytics involved in there. So when she started using Google Analytics, we could see that our website visits tripled from March to April. And we sold the most books that we have ever sold that month. But the main thing about this is, is you could see not just sales. You could see how many people got to that site. What's the demographic breakdown? What's the age breakdown? And this data is sort of points and points make prizes. So if you now know that the average person coming to your website was a 24 year old female who had kids, you could now maybe tweak some of your content do books that were meant for the age ranges that we're looking for, maybe change the advertising to match that persona a little bit more. But this information is not just basic information. You're starting to get demographic information. You can now start to build a bit of an idea of maybe a persona, a avatar, a um, your online customer. There's loads of different names for it. If you're interested and have a look a bit deeper into this as well, there is writing for social media and there is strategy for social media and build digital marketing plan. Each one of these courses have got an amazing amount of time sort of dedicated to a smaller area of like your online presence. So your right of a social media one goes into the personas, breaks this down over three or four slides rather than me just top level talking about it, which means that you've got an opportunity then to spend more time watching this content, but also more time developing your business. So straight away, have a look at Google Analytics. Have a look at trends.google.com. Each one of these are tools to bring out more data, to use data to back up your hypothesis. So if you ever have an idea, maybe you want to sell a new product, maybe you're thinking about doing other things, maybe you're thinking what keywords bring people to my business, analytics will show you the keywords. Google Search Console will show you the keywords. Use this information then to start to research maybe new areas you could look into. Have a look at Google Trends. You'll be able to type in words, see if it's popular, see if it's not. But all of these are tools that we're giving you for free from Google. So one of the ways to do this is a very simple process. Four steps to create a Google Maps listing. So one, create your listing on Google Business Profile. So literally, this takes no time at all. And we're going to go a little bit deeper into this in a minute. Complete your profile. It sounds ridiculous. But the amount of listings that I have seen, I have gone to, out of date, not even done, is ridiculous. And this literally takes five minutes. 
So complete your listing. Have a look throughout the whole thing. Categories, descriptions. Um, what are the services that you offer? Um, pictures of your staff, pictures of the outside of your shop, inside of your shop, people. And you might think your products and services, why is this all relevant? But the more content you put in there, the more answers you are answering for those individuals. Some people might want to just know your opening hours. Tick, I've got that. Some people might want to know, can I phone you? Other people don't want to phone you. They might want to just message you. Again, go to, um, I think it's under contact. And then you'll be able to tick a box that says turn on the um, message feature. And again, that now means that where one person wants to phone you, the other person wants to just drop you a message from something that they've copied and pasted to try and get quotes maybe. But straight away by completing the listing and ticking all of these boxes, you're now ticking the different boxes of communication, people's preferences, people's choices, which then means you're optimizing the chance of you being found as an individual business and optimizing the communication between you as well. Then, once you've completed the listing, it will then send you a postcard. And don't worry if you're a freelancer, maybe you are portable, a mobile person in your business, you can sign up. You have to associate an address to it. But once you've associated that address to it, you can then verify and untick a box to say, basically, don't display my address publicly. And if my address is public facing, you can untick the box and it will never be public facing. And then you just choose to serve an area. You could type in postcodes, you could type in cities, you could type in towns. And basically maps will then say this area is what you serve and give you uh, more visibility in those areas. For example, if I was in Scotland, I wouldn't want to type in pizza near me and my local pizza place in Manchester comes up because it would take four hours to get there and cost a lot of money to get delivered. But the main thing we're thinking here is complete your business verify your business make sure that box is unticked if you need it to be and then populate your listing so once you've done this you've all verified keep it populated add updates because updates is something that people look for by populating it regularly means you're getting the right response from the customers because they're looking for the right content a really good example of this is once when i was in the lake district uh, me and the missus pre-kids um fancy the afternoon tea it was christmas a festive time of year and I typed in Christmas afternoon tea near me when I was in the middle of the lakes. And literally a stone's throw away was a really good example of a Google My Business listing. Times it was open, um, afternoon tea, pictures on their profile of Christmas afternoon tea. I was like, yes, that is where we're going. Rang them up instantly or walked in, I can't remember which one I did. Went in, had afternoon tea, left. A few years later, we went back and we were both in the mood for afternoon tea again, as we regularly are. Um, and then basically typed that in again. And I noticed the same listing come up, and I was like, oh, that's cool. I wonder what they do now. But all the pictures were still the same from the Christmas one two or three years before, which switched me off a little bit, thinking, well, you've kept up to date with it there. You've brought me in. You've enticed me in then. But now, because you've not updated this to summer, maybe you've got a spring, maybe you've got an autumn one, maybe you've sweet your afternoon tea to match the seasons and local produce. Tell people about this. But they didn't. They just had the same picture, and no one's updated it. It could be because people have left. It could be because people don't know about it. But add this to the list of things that you need to do for your business. Because just creating it and completing it isn't enough. Just verifying it isn't enough. The amount of businesses that do nothing after they verify it is crazy. So how can you do this? Uh, ignore the right-hand side. That app has been sunsetted and you will not be able to download it now. Um, but what you can do is go to business.google.com. Go straight on there and then you'll see some big green buttons, top right and in the middle. Essentially, you click on that and then it'll essentially ask you for some of this information on the sign up process. And you just type in your business name, potentially the category of your business, and it's yours. On the flip side, what you could also do, which is quite interesting, there is a program that Google do called Google Guides, which is essentially anyone that's got a Google account and Google Maps can add locations. I'll often do this for local businesses who don't look too tech savvy. Uh, and I'll literally sit in the cafe, take a picture of the menu, the opening times are on there, and I'll add a listing for them. And then they can literally go claim this business. But that then means they have to go through the verification process. But I've done some of the groundwork for them because I'm nice. But the thing is, is that a lot of people don't even know their business listings can do this, which means they can take all of the credit later on with none of the work. So do keep an eye out if you think your business listing is already online. It can be that you can just claim it and then add that additional bit of information. But the main thing is once you've claimed your business and you've verified it, that is your own business. 
you have proven that you own that. So you will now be able to be searching for uh, in your business on Google Maps, on Google, and it will appear either on the right hand side or in Google Maps as a listing on the left hand side with the different markers around on Google Maps. But the main thing here is you have done this. You've spent that extra little bit of time to do this. It literally sends you a postcard. You type in those numbers or characters, verified. Job's done. If you're not sure how or where to do this, do you do it now? Do you do it later? You can make your entire listing and then hit verify. But realistically, to make the full listing, it takes approximately 15, 20 minutes tops. Like tops, if you've got all your content ready. So then you can hit, right, I've done this now. I'll verify it. I would just say as soon as you get onto it, hit verify. It takes three or four days to get here. Do not worry if you did not get that postcard. Do not worry if it didn't come to you. Hit verify again. I've seen it happen once many times where the card hasn't gone through. Rarely have I seen it happen twice. And I think once I've only seen it happen where someone has had it verify now three times because it got lost. It's not been sent. But either way, do not give up. Just hit verify. And it will come up with a sequence. You type in your address, you confirm something else, and it will send it to you. Once you've got that, you just hit verify now, type in that number, and everything goes green, ticks everywhere, and it is now a public listing available for the world to see. And remember, the more communication you do, the more likely you'll come up, the more reviews you've got, the more likely people will see these reviews. And remember, if you do get a bad review, it's not the end of the world. Reply to that review, be polite, be honest, be truthful. And respond professionally. Even if it's negative, you can respond professionally. But the more five-star reviews you get, the more these become insignificant. So populating your Google Maps listing. Essentially, manage your listing. You'll notice there's a cheeky little clock there. Please apply some time to your life to do this. Just spend that extra five minutes here and there asking for reviews when you've worked with a client, asking for some feedback, checking that it's up to date. For example, Google Workspace and Google for Education um, changed from G Suite. But people who train people on G Suite or Google for Workspace now still have not updated their listings from G Suite, which means it says get trained on G Suite now. But if anybody was looking for this now, that wouldn't be something someone would search, which means actually it's out of date, which means it doesn't match the most up to date things, which then means you're reducing the chances of being found. So manage this listing update it regularly with offers, with knowledge, with sharing information, and update your pictures. Update your opening hours. And you might think they don't change. It's Monday to Friday. Bank holidays. God forbid somebody in the business goes on holiday for an extended period of time. For example, there's a local business to me, um, which is a really tasty restaurant uh, called The Perfect Match. And every year they go away in, I think it's February, because they go, you know what? We've worked over Christmas. It's been very hard, but we've done well from it. We're going to go away now for a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. But that's their time to go away. And they don't shut the restaurant because the board, is like they're giving themselves a well-deserved break. But on their Google Maps listing, they will say temporarily closed. On the Facebook, online, they'll say, we're on holiday for the next month. Thank you so much for your custom throughout the year. We're on our well-deserved break. Really simple, really effective. But it's honest. It's out there. If you're closed for bank holidays, close it for bank holidays. For example, I remember once when I went to a local bakery near me that was a um, sourdough bakery, and I got there and it was closed. And I was like, well, that's a bit annoying. It says on the door it should be open at this time. It says on Google it should be open at this time. What's going on? It happened one more time to me when I thought maybe I just bad day, uh, and I didn't go again because I got frustrated. So keep it up to date. Keep your content fresh. It shows people that you're active. We're going to have a quick look uh, for some questions. So far, we've had uh, no questions. Feel free, guys. Remember that the more you ask questions, the more you introduce yourself, the more I can personalize this session just for you. So at least say hi, maybe introduce what your business is, maybe introduce who you are. And I can literally remove some of these examples that are on there and add your business to the forefront. And hopefully, you'll be able to take more away from this session than you would do normally. So next of all is optimizing it. Essentially, optimizing it means changing it, means keeping it up to date. You want to make it stand out from the rest. So how can we do this? You can include key information, gain more customer reviews, utilize posts and photos, and leverage the insights that you get for free from your Google Maps listing. 
So provide as much information as possible. So why do you think we keep saying this? Because it's 96% more likely to visit a business with opening hours on its listing. Because literally, if you've not got them, are you open till five? Are you open till four? Are you open till three? What do you sell? So you're more likely to visit it, 96% more likely, because there's enough information there for it to be able to do it. And Google Maps integrates into it and will literally say, oh, it'll be over for a few more hours. Or it's over for 20 minutes. Your journey takes 10 minutes. You're going to have to be quick or you may be in a rush. So it even helps you make that decision for you. Without it, there is no help. And it might even say, I don't know what time it's open. 42% increase in direction requests for businesses with photos. Two reasons for this. Well, there's more than two reasons. There's many reasons. The two reasons that I would definitely say is one, it gives you a solid knowledge of where it is. So if you've got no idea where you're going and there's a photo of uh, this little folder, well, it might be that when you look at that as a shop front and you're like, oh, there's a door, it's yellow, it's red, it's on that road, should we be about here? There it is. When if you've not got photos, you've not got updates, you've got to see a small sign, you've got to see something that's relevant, when actually, sometimes, just having that information means that actually, the photos help you find where it is. And if you're walking to it, it also means you're far more likely to find it. And again, another example of this once, when I was going for a meeting, there was a small door in the middle of Manchester Piccadilly, and I was looking for the meeting room. I walked around the block twice. I looked through the Google Maps listings, could not find it anywhere. Luckily, one of the pictures from ages ago, which you should put back at the forefront of it, showed a picture of it from a distance. And it had a white shop next to it and a blue shop next to it. And I was like, let's just find those shops. Walked around again. It was right there. But it was, it was sort of recessed into the wall and the door was not obvious. So a bit of a sort of man looking and not very sort of on it. But at the same time, by having that, it removes this problem and opens up more opportunities. 90% more likely to interact with you if you've got a phone number is visible. Again, it just shows that you're an active business. You've got a phone number attached to it. But more importantly, if I do want to ring you because I can't find you, we can do that. And again, this happens multiple times. The business I work for at the moment, we had an IT guy who couldn't find the location. The person whose phone number was associated to the... Um, Service was dead, um, not dead, the phone was dead, apologies, um, which then meant they couldn't find us. Typed in OFR, phone number on there, got through to the office, trying to get hold of Joe. He's not picking up his phone. All right, Joe, that's he's outside now. Where are you? I can't find you. I can't find the street. And I just said, stand there, look forward. That's the door. He got straight in. So again, it's just opening up potential channels of communication. So spend this time doing this. I'm not just saying this. These are facts. These are figures. These are internal data sources that are showing the reasons why we're asking you to fill in these listings. So ensure the core information is up to date. So updating your hours, like I mentioned before, just keep it up to date for bank holidays. Add a business description. This is not often as simple as you, you could think it. If you want to optimize this a little bit as well, don't just write, we sell socks, red socks, blue socks, purple socks, multicolored socks, rainbow socks. Spend time thinking about this. What are people typing into Google? Socks for shoes, formal sock wear, sports socks. Strange examples, I admit, but include these in your first few sentences. These are key words that people are looking for. Don't just say we're a local business based in the heart of Manchester that is perfect for anyone looking for suits and socks for their shoes. You've just mentioned about 15, 20 words without even mentioning your product. So make sure that in the description, you add what your product is, you add what your service is, you add your business name. Shoehorn it in, but make sure it's not like it's inaccurate or it doesn't really make any sense. But the main thing here is making sure these keywords are there. And don't just fill in 20 words. You've got, I think, 1,400 characters. Don't quote me on that exactly, but you've got a lot. I'm not saying fill that, but spend time developing that content updating that content, making sure the words are relevant to what people are searching for. If you don't know what people are searching for, ask your people. If you've got Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, do a poll. What are your big products that you do? Go into analytics, look at the most popular products, develop some more content and put it in that description. Include it in your title, include it in your products on the actual shop section inside Google My Business. Start to think about what is it people are doing? How can I match these two things together? So again, code-specific information. I know it's not as prevalent now, but 
this is a nice little tip box of even outside of this realm. If you had this on your wall and you just made a few notes of what's on here now, update your opening hours. Do I need to do this every month? Is the bank holidays coming up? Is my birthday coming up? Are people off? Do I have to close? Use attributes to um, to highlight service options. So, for example, you can have female-led business. You can have uh, disability accessible. So if your business is and your business can, like, tick these boxes. These are nice additional features that people see, and it might persuade people because of these. Add posts to your profile. Make this a weekly thing. Make this a monthly thing. Make this something that's relevant so that you are updating it so we don't get the problem that I mentioned in the Peak Lake District. Turn on messaging, as I mentioned before. Edit your business description as you can. Not every day, not every week, maybe, but maybe once a month, once every four months. And just keep it fresh and try and keep it up to date. Hours and services. Um, disclaimers, you can put links to sort of policies in there. Again, utilize Google Trends and highlight temporary closures. Please highlight temporary closures. People do not mind your business being shut, but they do mind when they turn up and it is closed. So you can remove the word specific uh, COVID specific information and start thinking about actually, this is just information that I could definitely keep up to date, definitely utilize and have a little checklist and go, Joe mentioned that, Joe, I've done that, I've done that, I've done that, I've done that. Even if you just put all this in a document and then transposed it into Google Maps, that would work. So creating engaging posts. So now we've gone past the sort of core information, what to do, why to do it, how to do it. We've not really gone into how to do a post. We've not really done creating posts, but you'll notice that it doesn't just say create posts. It says create engaging posts because nobody wants a post that just says buy a pizza now. They want a picture that's got someone happily eating a pizza. They want a big cheesy piece of string going and you can tell it's fresh pizza. It's got maybe a bit of oil on there. It's like an artisan base. It's not a big thick crust base that has clearly not been created in the pizzeria. But the main thing is here, we need to drag people in with attention. So add a title that essentially is four or five words long that grabs people's attention. It stands out. Technically, you, you can sort of add what you want here. And I wouldn't say add anything. But in the title, you've got 58 words, 58 characters, which is a bit long winded for me. Four or five words is just a really quick, snappy title to try and grab people's attention. Um, family Fridays, um, student Tuesdays, student Wednesdays, whatever it is, but you get in that title, uh, buy one, get one free family Friday. Some are simple, some are snappy call and provide a call to action. So when we say this, don't just put pizza here. That's not really a call to action. Buy this pizza. Now treat your family tonight Um, buy one, get one free. So when people click on that, it goes through to a relevant page that matches that offer. One of the last things you want to do as well is you do add a call to action and it's a buy one, get one free. Don't land on a page that doesn't have that on there. Match the page with your call to action. And then consider that this call to action makes you want someone to click on that and call this action to happen by clicking on it. Use photos and videos to persuade with this like a pizzeria. If it's Friday fun, don't have a pizza or just a picture of a pizza. Try and get something that's relevant to it. A picture of a family eating, smiling. A video, ask, obviously. A video of maybe some kids eating the pizza, or laughing. Maybe a birthday party shows that you do that. If you were to turn up for a family, we'll do a big massive umbrella. We'll do a big candle. For example, what's it called? Um, the American one. Uh, TJ Fridays. They do a massive thing where you get a candle in it. It just gets put on your dessert. They all clap, they all sing, and it's a nice little thing. And people go for that exact reason. But again, nobody would know if your place didn't do that if you didn't have pictures or videos of it. Write a clear description just to make sure that you've got as much information that people want. You've got approximately 1,500 characters, if I'm correct. And this will give you a way of adding that more information, adding those details. So it could be that you've got buy one, get one free, family Fridays. A picture of it, some text that backs that up. But it could also be maybe a small pin on the principle that you buy a large pizza, a large adult pizza, you will get one free. Not if you buy a three pound kids pizza, you get another one free. So it could be small print. It could be additional information. It could be links to different areas of your website. If you want more information about where this is, it could even be a link to your menu. It could even be a simple post saying, 
here's our latest menu. Click here to see it today. Click, open the menu. Brilliant. But I've made that journey easier. They don't have to go into the website, go to menu, bring it down. It could just be, well, what do they do? Click on that, have a look. I've decided, click on that, order one. All of a sudden, this additional information is bringing more information, but it's engaging your users because you might see the title go, hmm, interesting, the picture backs that up, call to action, click on it. What additional information could I have? Oh, it's there. But make sure the post is accurate. If you start saying 20% off, it lands on the page and there's no 20% off, people are going to see a disjointedness between these posts and probably just leave. If you can't offer something, don't just put it on a post for attention. But just consider this because I have seen this where someone's done a post and they might do 20% off. But the problem is if they do 20% off, you need to make that abundantly clear on the page that people land on. So why are reviews so important, people? Why do you think reviews are so important? So we've got um, Emma from Birmingham is a comms manager for an independent restaurant called Chapter. Um, <laughs> and yes, it is a bit as a recording. Uh, so you've got a work call. Um, but yeah, like an independent restaurant. Why do you think reviews are important for independent restaurants? So if you've got a restaurant and you ask your customers to write a review, that's their opinion. That is social proof of somebody else's opinion that actually means that somebody has passed on their sort of handshake, their, um, even you could even say like they're sort of like agreeing that your business is good, but passing that recommendation on to others. And they've even spent the time to write you a review to go, this was an amazing meal, really enjoyed whatever. Joe served me today. He couldn't have done more for me. Even though we dropped a pizza, they provided us with a new one at no extra cost. I could not be happier with the service. Can't wait to go back. And little Ellie loved it. Never really liked pizza, but they were perfect to us. See you soon. Amazing. But that review is a family person talking about a family restaurant, talking about how that's relevant to them. And hopefully... There's another family person looking at these reviews, looking at how a family restaurant can be relevant to them and seeing the service that happened and go, actually, no, oh, that happened to me once. Little Jimmy knocked the pizza on the floor. I had to pay £20 for a new one. It was the adult one. I was fuming. But all of a sudden, you've got a little bit of like, oh, that's a nice gesture to have done. And people might just put five star. People might just put great restaurant. But the most important thing here is encourage people to do it. A five-star review with no text is still a five-star review. But if you don't ask people and make this as easy as possible, then you're going to struggle to get these reviews in the first place. So the question we've got to ask yourself here is, two out of three people say positive reviews were an important factor to deciding on the business to buy from or not. But it's great that we talk about this, but how can we encourage people to write reviews? Essentially, think of different ways you can do this. So it could be when someone has an amazing meal, on the receipt, there's a link. There's a bit.ly link, maybe. So a bit.ly is a website where basically you can put in bit.ly forward slash Joe's Restaurant Review. And someone doesn't need to know how to spell your restaurant, doesn't need to know what your website address is. They can just type that in. You can put a QR code. Recently, one of the businesses that I'm working with um, I use an NFC tag, a little bit more complicated, but not difficult. And literally, I ordered a few NFC tags online, and they cost me like about 50p a pound each. Uh, and then essentially, you write to those NFC tags. Uh, and I just used a free online tool from the App Store called uh, NFC Tools. And literally, I got the tag. I used my phone. It wrote their website address to it. And now in their little cafe, when someone comes in, they've got a big piece of paper with A4 piece of paper with a, a red circle in the middle and someone just goes tap and it opens up their Google reviews. That is to me the most best, the, the most uh, ingenious way of doing it. But any of them work. But most importantly, if you don't ask them in the first place, how are they going to do this? If you've got someone who just sang and danced about your best cupcakes in the world, would you mind leaving us a review telling us that? Oh, I don't know how. Help them with it. Spend that time. Make the QR codes at NFC a bit.ly or tell them how to do it and literally go, I'll, I'll take you through the steps. Here you go. You write the review now. It's not up to me. Oh, could you help me write it? Of course I can. What would you like to say? Bam, 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 bam. But these reviews make people come to your business. So spend this time now writing a note. 
how do I get people to write reviews? S write a little bit of a, a spiel down for maybe some of the younger staff that might work there or for yourself to just remember it. And then look into a bit.ly, look into NFC and look into QR codes. Print them off, stick them up on the entrance, on the exit, on the doors, on the walls, on the back of your menus so that people have always got that option. Utilize photos and videos to stand out. So again, if you've got, say, for example, a pasta restaurant, a pizza restaurant, maybe show the making of the pizzas. This is how we make our pizza in three minutes. And you might think like, well, I've always wondered how to do that. And it's someone rolling out the dough. It's someone rolling it out into a circle shape, sticking on the toppings, putting it into the oven, a GoPro going right up to it, seeing it bubbling, seeing it, the oils being released from the chorizo, seeing the spinach wilting down, cracking an egg on top to make it into, I think it's a Valencia pizza, I can't remember. Um, so that actually you start to see all these different parts of the restaurant. You start to envelop the story of your restaurant. People can start to engage with it. But all of these, because you've utilized the video, but you can see now the sort of behind the scenes of that video is we make fresh pizza. We make fresh pizza with fresh ingredients. Perfect for you. If you want to come and have a pizza, come to us. Not this comes straight from a freezer. But that's what you're secretly saying behind that video. But people are engaging with it. And all of a sudden, the more videos, the more posts, the more content that you're putting up, it substantially increases the chances. 40% more requests for directions and 39% of customers say they will stop engaging with the site if the images don't appear. So straight away, think of the power of imagery. If you just got text, text speaks however many words that text is. A picture can speak a thousand words. A video can speak a million words. Edit it well together. It can speak even more about your brand, you as an individual, your business. So spend the time thinking about this. How can you get your photos better? How to get your videos better? Go online, go onto YouTube, take a video of my pizza. How do I do that? How do I edit it together? You've got editing tools. You've got free editing tools. You've got TikTok. You've got Facebook, Instagram, um, your website, YouTube channel. Could you even do some of the people? During lockdown, for example, a local place to us to help get a bit of extra revenue, did pizza baking, pizza making, cheese classes, wine classes, did online things so that people could watch them. And they carried on doing those pizza things, not as regularly, but about once every few months, they'd do a pizza thing where you can buy all the stuff in the shop, make it at home, and then make it online with them and help them step by step go through those processes. So top tips for taking pictures. Like I said a second ago, how can I make my pictures better? How can I do this? So straight away, think of the lighting. So for example, when I'm doing this presentation, you'll be able to see now, uh, oh, in a second anyway, um, this go darker, this go lighter, too bright, and then just bring it down a tad. But the reason for this is because I've thought about this to make sure you can see the, the, best, <laughs> the best of me possible. But the thing is, is it's the same with photos. If you've got like a nice space where you've got natural light coming through the windows and you've got a fresh piece of pizza that you've just done, you can even take a picture of it before you serve it to people. You've not got the money or time to maybe do it during the day when everything's closed. But taking these pictures in a light box, spending these time to get some nice LEDs, some red light, some blue light, some orange light, even get one of those sort of LEDs multicolor thing so you can choose the sort of imagery that you're trying to put across making sure it is in focus. You can even use like portrait mode where it'll focus on the object and blur the back of it just to make it that extra little bit professional without having to use any tools. When you come into editing it, smartphones now have got so much software. If you've never heard of any, I don't know at all. You can literally go to Google, best image editing software for iPod, iPhone, best imaging software for Android. Best free imaging software for a computer. Best paid imaging software for a computer. How do I edit my images? Google is the absolute beast that it is because there's that much content on there. But editing these together means you can make your job easier. You can make sure that you actually don't have to think about this when you're doing it because actually the main thing is you've taken the picture in the first place well. You've considered lighting, focus, so the editing is minimal. That's what the ideal situation is. Then when we're thinking about framing, you need to start considering about, well, what can be seen in your photos? 
don't just take a picture on a table and you've got a glass for some reason in the corner, a random thing opened, the inside of a sock holder, your phone just there. Move everything out the way. Does the cup add anything? Is it a wine glass? Is it a flute? Are you trying to sell a bit of a scene? Okay, leave that in. But consider what is there. Consider the objects that are around you. Choose that space carefully so you can get good light, bad light, the right time of day, the camera position. Can you get like maybe a little tripod? Can you use a phone like this? Could you say once a week when your friend comes over, could you use their phone? Could you start to think, could I get a camera? How do I do this? Google it. There's that many things that you could do that it's just about thinking about these things before you post them online. And lastly, could you crop these pictures down? If there are details around that you don't need, crop it down. Take out the backgrounds. Use tools like Canva. Use tools like uh, Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R.com, I think it is. And there's an X version is the one I'd recommend. Um, and basically, that will give you ways then of improving your images without you even really having to think too much. So here's some examples of what you could do and what you shouldn't do. So, for example, this one in the bottom left-hand corner. This is a picture of the exterior of your cafe. Great. It shows you it's green. It shows you that it's 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 good. But actually, it's a bit blurry. It doesn't give me any context of where your shop is. It just means I'm looking for a window with dots. It could have changed color. But if you come out a little bit, you can see the building next door. You can see the building here. All of a sudden, I've now got a point of actual processing in my head to go right it's got a red wall with a green sharp it's just over there so all of a sudden you've now got a bit more context then when we take this maybe one step further we're looking inside someone's like do i want to go here can i envision myself being here interior a random blurry picture of what i can only assume is a screen now we've got the one above it's a nice full view of the shop you can see it's got space it's got bigger tables it's got multiple bigger tables so if you're worried do i bring a family of five here or I don't know, there's no picture of the inside. That one's a bit blurry. Oh, wait, I'm looking at this one. There's at least three tables with four or five seats. There's a big space at the back. You know what? I think we'll go here. It should be fine. And then last of all, also giving you context of the actual people that are there, giving you context of how they are. Is this a friendly atmosphere? The exterior, the interior, and photos at work are great ways of engaging with your people who are trying to find you. So what things can we see on this photo? So this is the exterior photos. What can we look for here? So first of all, the business name is in focus, not just there, in focus. Addition into this, the whole shop is in the frame from one side to the other side. You could use this to locate it. It's big, it's orange, it's got white doors with little canopies and green things above it. Boom, straight away, I should be able to find this. And when we take this another step further, we're looking at interior photos. So the image is bright and well lit because we took it during the day when it was sunny. Genius idea, but also quite simple idea. What does this mean? It means now I can see a selection of the products that are on show. There's some coffee. There's coffee in a jar, coffee in a bag. There's some percolated coffee. There's some dripped coffee. They've got a proper coffee machine. They've got a coffee grinder. They've got syrups. They've got plants, they've got books that you can buy. All of a sudden, I've never really looked at that picture in that much detail, but I can pull all of that from that photo. And you can infer what kind of business this is by the products and services that are sold. Is this a serious coffee shop? Yes, because you can see they're selling coffee. They've got different types of coffee. They've got different types of coffee machines. It looks nice, it's clean. All of a sudden, is this somewhere I want to go? Potentially, yes. So photos at work. What does this photo show to you? To me, it shows a good quality of service. Look at all the tools behind them. Not just in a mess, because they've thought about the photo. Nicely lined up. Hairbrush, clippers. The person himself is very smart. The decor is very smart. But the main thing is, if I'm thinking, do I want to get a haircut here? It's not some random person in a pair of trackies with a hat on, basically going, I'll, I'll cut your hair. This person's a professional. He's wearing a nice watch. He's got a nice shirt on. The stuff around is a nice atmosphere. I'm like, you know what? I could see myself going here. If you look in detail, they've even got Bose speakers in the background, I think. They've got nice down lights. 
They've got a reflection of somebody else working there. So maybe you're not going to wait as long as others. They've got all these different products, which means it can suit your different situations. You can probably get a beard trim there. You can get your hair styled. You can see he's gone for a more advanced trim. All of a sudden, everyone's happy. But the photos at work demonstrates this. And I've just extrapolated all of that and inferred all of that from one photo of a guy cutting someone's hair. But think of the time that went into that. Was that guy cutting the other person's hair randomly at the same time? Probably not. That was probably staged. But it demonstrates this information. So what can the insights do for you? So if you want to think about insights, they can give you a lot of additional information. So insights can show you many things. And the reason you want to learn about insights is because essentially they show you how customers find your listings, what they did once they found you, where they were coming from, when people engage the most, and how you're engaged compares to a similar listing. And you might think, why is this relevant? Well, on the left-hand side, you can see they've come from Google, they've either typed in your business name or they've found you through a bit of searching. It then also shows you the fact that uh, where customers are, uh, one second, let me just see that in more detail. You can also see the total amount of views on which days. Is this because you're posting regular content here? Is it because your shop is open seven days a week, but it's always dead at the weekends? Well, what could we do about this? We're looking here and we can see there's a mad spike every single day in the 25th of Feb, which is a Wednesday. Okay, can we try and push some of these people to the weekend? Can we try and talk to these people to get them in at the weekend? But all of a sudden, this now means that you've started to open this up. You can see here the total amount of phone calls. If you're always out of the office on a Thursday, but your phone calls are the most busiest on a Thursday, you're getting answer phone messages, loads of them on a Thursday, on a Wednesday. Maybe it's worth hiring someone on a Thursday and a Wednesday. They answer all those phone calls. They probably consolidate more leads and they will justify the cost of having that person. But simple tools like even the phone call frequency, and it goes up and down from the weeks before, it will tell you that. It also shows your direction requests, where people are coming from, how many people are coming from that area. And you might think, well, why is that useful? Well, it's blooming useful because now you know there's loads of people in that area ringing you. Could you advertise in that area on Facebook, on Google ads? So all of a sudden, all of this data is more valuable than gold. And why do you think I say that? Because essentially gold can be used once. It can be used, you can wear it, whatever. But data can be used again and again and again. And that one person ringing you from that area, you then advertise that area, that one little bit of information, that we've got 10 people coming from Berry, for example, you advertise to Berry, you get 100 clients. Brilliant. Now those 100 clients, that's giving you more information. What popular times are, what they're searching for. Use that information to get more information. And it snowballs. And data makes information. And information gives you knowledge and insights into your business. So what do you do if this was your insight? So straight away, we're looking at this and we've noticed that there's loads of photos and the 5th of July, the 12th of July, people look at your photos and it's starting to dip a little bit. And other photos receive more views from similar businesses who do more photos. So post more. This could be you looking at it and going, you know what, I posted it 5th of July and I got a few people looking at this, but then it's tailed off. What do you do? Do some extra posts. Make your business stand out a little bit. What would you do with this insight? Our customers view your business profile on Google. So in the last month, you can see there's certain things that are going on, listings and search. What happened on, I'm assuming that's maybe like the 22nd of July, was there an event that's relevant to your business? Was there something that happened on that day? Are those drops weekends? What can we try and do about this? Find out what that event was. Why was it such a big spike? Is it something I can maybe advertise for next year? Find out what that is and start to get that spike even bigger next year or next week or next month, whenever that is. But the main thing is you're looking at this data. You're looking at the listings, you're looking at your data, and you're trying to extrapolate data to make a decision on your business using this data. So use insights to find new customers. Understand your audience's behavior. The biggest thing here about doing this is the fact that if you understand who your audience is, you can create posts for them. You can even make the website more targeted at those customers. Again, have a look at writing for social media, strategy for social media to understand who your audiences are. Build a bigger picture. 
a story about that audience, demographic information about that audience. You should have at least three target audiences for your business, minimum. There isn't a limit of how many, but make sure you nail each one of those before you start moving on to more because you want to make sure you understand what platform they're on. You want to understand what sort of content they're looking for. You want to understand the imagery, the videos, the brand. Once you've got all of that together, you've got that one, you understand it, move on to the next one. Adapt to their needs. So if you've got parents with kids, how can you adapt it to them? How can you make posts more relevant to them? Don't just post the same picture and put Family Friday, Student Tuesday. It's like the same picture. Why can't we tweet this? Why can't we have a picture of a family? If you've not got any, next time a family's in your restaurant, ask them, incentivize it. I'll get you a free round of drinks if you don't mind me taking a few pictures. That free round of drinks cost you 40p. But those pictures could drive in much traffic. Much traffic could drive in a lot more traffic. So all of a sudden, adapt the needs to the people who are coming into your restaurant. Make this content relevant to them. Reach new customers because all of a sudden, this knowledge that you're building from everything we're talking about today optimizes the chances of you finding these new customers. Ask your returning customers, why do you come here? Could you fill in this questionnaire? Here's a link to a questionnaire like Google Forms or type form and it automatically collates the data for you so you can start to work out actually what is it that people are actually doing here what is it that people are coming here for right this is why they're coming here why am i not advertising this on the website why aren't i doing posts about this to show people what it is that i'm amazing at? and then all of a sudden that information gets me a long way and all of a sudden that now means actually you can use this information to get even more people so Understand your customers. The audience's behavior means you can use this for more posts moving forward by adapting. And this will then necessarily, this will then sort of move on to the next stage, which is reaching your new customers. And then take it one stage further. Understand all this. Do some ads on Facebook. Do some ads on Google. Depending on what your business or product is, once you understand this, don't just sit on it. Get another lead generation tool. And start to go to social media. Use this to make posts that are relevant to those. Putting content on your website. Writing blogs about this. Building up your SEO. All of a sudden, this could be the start of a very deep and long journey. And you can choose to go down the rabbit hole or not go down the rabbit hole. But essentially, what you're doing now is just dipping your toes in the rabbit hole. Put a leg in there. And then start to see where it goes. Have a look at the Google Digital Garage qualification. If you could put a link to that, I'd be much appreciated. Essentially, this shows you a sort of a broad spectrum of digital marketing, which may take you even more down the rabbit hole. But do have a look at these different options because your business will only thrive because of it. We're going to have a quick look now for some questions. I didn't see any questions. The only thing I saw was Emma had to take a call. Yes, it is recorded. It's a shame you weren't here. You could have asked some more questions. Hopefully, everyone's enjoyed today's session. Um, if you could do is have a look at engaging customers with Google's business profile features. There's a good few of them. You've got categories, booking, street view, websites, and gift cards with donations. A thing to bear in mind is I've talked about how to add this. You just simply select the category that's relevant to you. Once you've done this, like I mentioned before, you sign up to a platform, you choose your provider, and you can track the bookings. But what's amazing, you can add this to your Google business listing. By adding Street View, people can take a tour of your shop, take a tour of your venue, can take a tour of your office, which gives them the maximum amount of chance to see what it's like to make their decisions for you. Street View basically means you can provide more information, enables customers to make better decisions, and helps customers find you. If you haven't got a website, you can also build a website in seconds by literally going to the website tool in Google My Business, and it builds your website based on all your information from your business. And this will build your website for you. So have a little watch. You'll see here in this demonstration that it literally takes a few seconds to build up the fundamental website if you've finished all of your Google My Business listings. And this literally, when you've done it, produces a website. You can publish this. Now you've got a basic website for people to be able to use for their Google My Business listings. Really simple, really effective. Could not recommend it enough. Cheeky calls to action at the top. Now you've done it. We've had no questions. We've had nobody ask anything additionally. Remember to have a look at the mentorings, g.co forward slash UK mentorings. Hopefully, everyone has enjoyed today's session. Hopefully, you'll take it a bit away from it. It's going to be here till tomorrow at noon. Have a nice day. Thank you very much for getting involved in the Google Digital Garage. 
thank you, Samantha, for getting involved and getting all of the comments and the links out today. Hopefully we'll see you again. See you again soon.